As you know, uh, today we're reporting for three reporting periods, and from Friday to Saturday, we had 652 new cases diagnosed with COVID-19 in the province. Saturday to Sunday, there are an additional 486 people diagnosed with COVID-19, and Sunday to today, 529 new cases identified. That gives us a total of 1,667 people diagnosed with COVID-19 over the past three days, 14 of whom were epidemiologically linked cases. That brings our total in British Columbia to 47,067 people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Of the new cases, 283 people were in Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 1,084 people were in the Fraser Health Region, 21 were in Vancouver Island, 189 people were in Interior Health, and 90 people were in the Northern Health Region. We now have 9,718 active cases in all areas of the province, 341 of whom are in hospital, 80 of those in critical care or ICU. We do have uh, probably slightly over 9,651 people who are under uh, public health, um, active public health monitoring. They, uh, there's been a data um, uh, transition in the Northern Health, so we don't actually have the active cases under active monitoring in Northern Health today. We'll be updating that tomorrow. And in addition, we have 35,455 people who've recovered from COVID-19. As we know, we've had a number of outbreaks in long-term care, and that reflects in the fact that we had 41 people in the past weekend who died from COVID-19, bringing the total number of people who've died to 713 in British Columbia. And of the new people who have died, most of those cases, again, were people in long-term care. This weekend, families, care providers, and communities have lost loved ones. We know that this is such a challenging time, and we mourn with you, and we feel your loss. We have five new health care outbreaks at Fleetwood Villa, Nicola Lodge, the Mayfair Seniors Living, the Gardens at Qualicum Beach, and Heritage Retirement Residence, and uh, five outbreaks that were declared over at Bradley Centre, White, Ro White Rock Seniors Village, Royal City Manor, Harrison Point, and Age Care Harmony Court Estates. So we have uh, 55 active outbreaks in long-term care and assisted living and six in acute care units. And uh, we currently still have uh, 1,424 residents and 792 staff with active cases. In addition, we've had new community outbreaks at two coastal gas link locations in the Burn Lake, uh, Burns Lake and Nechaco local health areas. And Northern Health is working with Coastal Gas Link and with uh, Pacific Atlantic uh, Pipeline Corporation to address the issues that are occurring in the, the areas um, along this, uh, this project, including um, issuing orders around safety staffing and COVID safety plans that must be reviewed by uh, public health and Northern Health before the operations start again. Last week, um, we immunized 3,644 mostly healthcare workers um, who received uh, the COVID-19 vaccine in the Lower Mainland. And today I can confirm that uh, vaccine deliveries have arrived in, in every health authority in British Columbia. As we saw last week in Vancouver and in Fraser Health, teams in the other health regions are preparing, um, even as we speak, uh, to get immunization clinics underway in the coming days. What we've seen so far is that things are changing quickly and will continue to change quickly as we get a better sense of how much vaccine is coming when. Um, but the last week was a great kickoff for our immunization programs across the province. And as we go through the next coming weeks and months, we will have more information and more details about exactly how much vaccine and who is uh, eligible to receive the vaccine and where and how. So please be patient, and as information becomes available, we will be sharing it. 
I know as well many people have questions about the new genetic variant of the virus that we that has emerged over the last few days in the United Kingdom. We have seen from the very beginning with this virus that it does mutate, as we expect, with RNA viruses in particular, and this one mutates relatively slowly. Um, and we did see these slight differences if we think about the comparison of people who had uh, um, brought their illness from Washington State, for example, compared to Iran or China. What we see in, in the, what has arisen in the UK is a new variant that has a number of mutations, uh, as many as 17 mutations, different um, changes in parts of the virus. The evidence has shown that so far it does not seem to increase severity of illness. However, it does seem to mean that the virus can transmit more easily. And that's something that we're still trying to understand and figure out. And it could be because one of the, the changes, the, very, the mutations, has made the virus more easily able to attach to those receptors that allow the virus to get into our body and start the infectious process. So that's one of the things that uh, scientists are looking at very carefully to see if, uh, if there's um, any other changes that this virus uh, mutation has, um, will uh, enable as well. And uh, we've had a number of meetings over this weekend to try and understand uh, the impact of this and whether we've seen anything here in Canada. And uh, as you know, all of my colleagues across the country and the provincial health officers are watching this very closely. Yesterday, the Government of Canada put in a temporary travel restriction stopping all flights from the UK so that we can get a better handle of where this might have been and what measures we need to take to ensure that it doesn't get introduced and spread widely here in Canada. This pause gives us that time to put in appropriate protective measures and we'll be working together to determine which those will be. As well, I've asked our, our lab at the BC CDC to review the whole genome sequencing. So from the very beginning, we've been looking at the genomic sequence of the viruses that we're seeing here in British Columbia. And to date, we have not seen this variant here in British Columbia. We have seen some mutations, and particularly when people come from different parts of the world. And we've seen some of the mutations that are seen in the 17 changes from the, the virus that was found in, in the UK. But the strain that is circulating in the UK we have not seen in Canada or in British Columbia. I think the other important thing to note is that so far, this, uh, these changes don't seem to cause more severe disease and don't seem to interfere with the ability of vaccine to, to give people protection. And as well, one of the things we're concerned about is that it might affect the ability of the test to pick up the virus, and that does not seem to be the case either. So those are good things. However, we will be watching very carefully and monitoring this over the coming days and weeks. As we all know, COVID-19 spreads quickly, but shows up slowly. It can take days or weeks to understand. Um, and when it does appear, we, it, we know it can cause serious and life-threatening illness. And that, in turn, can overwhelm our hospitals and our long-term uh, and our acute care system. We are starting to see a leveling of our COVID-19 curve in BC, and that is good news but it is a leveling at a very high level, which means that transmission continues to happen, particularly in the Lower Mainland, but also as we've been seeing, the interior and the north are having quite large transmission events relative to the population. And we continue to see hundreds of new people each day with confirmed cases, and they expose others. With the restrictions that we've had in place, the number of people who've had close contact has decreased, but it is still a substantial number, many of whom become ill themselves and require care and treatment in hospital. We have to remember that people getting sick today were in, in contact with others days ago as much as two weeks ago. That is why the actions we take today make such a difference to all of our well-being tomorrow and next week and the week after. And why it is so important today and this week to stay small, to stay local, and continue to use our layers of protection 
as the holidays approach. If you are in doubt, err on the side of caution and choose to stay away right now. This is how we will get into the new year with reduced cases and reduced risk. As we all know as well, and I was talking to many of my colleagues and friends on the front lines, our healthcare workers and teams and our public health teams have been working nonstop to provide care and to provide that public health connection to all those who need it, and they are in need of a reprieve. Today, on this longest night of the year, let's do our part to give them the break they deserve to. Let's all share some light with our healthcare workers and show them we care for them as much as they care for us. I ask you all to be part of our team doing that. We want to finish this year and start 2021 in the best possible position. We know we have vaccine now. We know that it's going to take time for us to get everybody protected. But the steps we take in the last days of 2020 are going to ensure a brighter, healthier and safer 2021 for all of us. I have also made my own personal commitment to celebrate self safely, to stay small, so that I can keep my community, my friends, the people closest to me safe. I ask you to do the same. Make the commitment today. Have a safe holiday celebration. Reach out to those people in your community, your friends, your family, but do it in a way that's safe. Together, let's make this holiday season a safe season for all of us so we can put this year behind us and start 2021 by moving into the light. Let's also, of course, continue to um, do this with kindness, continue to be calm, and continue to be safe. Thank you.